Habu Hotel is a self-described virtual community for teens. At its peak in 2012, it had customers from 150 different countries, had 273 million registered users, and saw 5 million unique visitors every month. Habu was essentially Club Penguin for teenagers. You could visit places, chat to people, play games, and make your own rooms. However, there is one thing that dominates all aspects of Habu life. Coins. Coins could buy you the latest furniture, the nicest clothing, and Habo Club, a form of premium membership to distinguish you from the peasants. The issue with coins is that they can't be obtained through normal gameplay. You have to buy them with real life money. This means that coins have actual monetary value, and some players have sold their virtual currency for thousands of dollars. With the prospect to make actual real life money, Habo turned from a glorified chat room to a terrifying experiment of anarcho-capitalism done on teenagers and adolescent children. Anarcho-capitalist societies can generally be characterised by three main points, and Habo ticks all of the boxes. 1. Anarcho-capitalist societies are anarchies, which means that there is no central government control. In 2012, Habo employed 225 moderators worldwide. Now, there are zero moderators. All of them have been replaced by artificial intelligence, which only serves to censor bad words. The lack of any real moderation has led to the proliferation of scams and illegal casinos throughout the hotel. The second characteristic of anarcho-capitalist societies is capitalism, which by definition means the trade and industries within society is controlled by private owners for profit rather than the state. Habo is defined by capitalism. Coins will never be given out by Habo unless they are purchased. Trading is a key aspect within the game and it isn't regulated or moderated. And finally, the last characteristic of anarcho-capitalist societies is that they are a mecca for paedophiles. These two conditions have led Hebo to turn into an emulation of a free market capitalistic and materialistic society. Their adolescent and teenage players end up turning into ruthless capitalists in order to survive. New players who join Habo Hotel start off with zero coins. The only way for players to get coins are to either pay for them or to get them from someone else. Giveaways are the breadlines of Habo. In the absence of government, the privatised welfare state steps in. Giveaways are events where rich Habos donate furniture and coins to peasants in need. You may be tempted to think that this charity is altruism at work. It isn't. This is an example of a giveaway. You may be confused as to why there are fastpass queues in a giveaway, like the ones found in theme parks. This isn't unusual. When there is no regulation or moderation, people are free to call whatever they want as giveaways. In reality, this is a for-profit game. In order to win coins, you first need to roll a 6 in the dice. Next, you need to teleport to one of these green areas, which you have a 33.3% chance of doing. Finally, you need to pull a switch, which, assuming is not rigged, has a 50% chance of failure. Assuming you do all of that, you win the grand prize of one coin. Now, you could risk it. Pull the second switch, which, assuming is not rigged, has another 50% chance of failure. That would bag you the grand prize of two coins. Crunching the numbers, you only have a 2.78% chance of winning one coin. The chance of winning the jackpot of 50 coins? That's a 0.022% chance. Now remember that I mentioned Fastpass earlier. In these types of quote-unquote giveaways, the owner usually sells a Fastpass, which allows you to skip the long peasant queue and gives you slightly more favourable odds. But like a casino, these odds are stacked against you, and chances are you will not make your money back. And once the owner sells enough fast passes for the day, they shut down the giveaway. And they open a new one, under a new name, where you have to buy a new fast pass. No refunds given. 
But those aren't the only types of giveaways. There are other forms, such as radio giveaways, where players are forced to listen to a radio operated by a fan site. Hello everyone, this is DJ Danny, and this is HapleQuest.com. So I have maybe like 20 more minutes of my show left. Um, let me check the request line just really fast. No request, and no new Lakers. If you guys can hit that hard button, I will appreciate it so much. I'll give you guys a shout out on air. Um, HapleQuest are higher. The DJ periodically tells the viewers the special key word that is required before you can collect your duck or whatever the DJ feels like giving to you. This of course boosts traffic for the fan site so they're earning money too. Real life money, that is. Then there are levers giveaways. Levers giveaways are run by rich habos who are no longer interested in the game. These type of giveaways usually attract the most attention and these habos could be extremely generous. Or they could be trolls. In the absence of moderation, there's nothing you can do about it. Corporations dominate every facet of Habo Hotel. They have a special name. Agencies. In return for working in their corporation, you get paid coins. The amount each agency pays differs depending on pay policy. And like corporations in real life, agencies have tried to attract players in many ways. Welcome to the United Nations, the most innovative agency in Habo Hotel. We do things differently, starting with getting great pay and rank rewards for work. But the modus operandi of all agencies are the same. People get paid to recruit others, so let's run it down. First, a new player like you heads up to the front desk to apply for a job. You are given a nice shiny badge, a new motto which displays your rank within the agency, and a hideous uniform. You are then ushered into a training room where your training begins. You are taught to obey commands given to you by higher ranks. Disobedience will not be tolerated and you will be fired for doing so. You are then given a set of rules, like wear your uniform, no coloured chat and never ask for pay or promotions ever. There are no workers rights in Habo, there are no trade unions in Habo, there is no safety net or employment protection in Habo. You are told to comply or be sacked. After that, you are taught how to hire new people and work in the front desk. Help others begin their career in the same way someone started yours. After that indoctrination session, you are told to begin to recruit new people. As you start pouring hours into working, you begin to be promoted into higher ranks. Higher ranks give you privileges, like working in easier jobs like security or training, or the privilege to stop wearing that hideous uniform, or to be able to use coloured chat. This system of promotions end up cementing your loyalty to the agency and make you spend even more hours in it. Wages can be meagre. Agencies usually advertise that they pay oh, £6 an hour or 71 coins a week, but in reality the peasants only get paid one coin an hour, and pay is only given at certain designated pay times. After getting paid, you are told to continue working and are threatened to get pay banned if you don't follow their pay policy. With such low wages, people begin to work in agencies for hours to even get enough coins for some decent furniture for their rooms. Habo no longer becomes a game, instead it becomes a medium for your daily commute to work in an agency that pays you little and demands your obedience. But of course, pay is still pay. One coin an hour may seem little, but if you're the owner of an agency, having an agency staffed by dozens of workers on minimum wage can still be taxing. So how do agencies make money? The answer lies in power. The obedience demanded by corporations on its workers are no accident. People enjoy telling others what to do. 
Agencies run on a very simple hierarchical structure where the owners boss around the directors who boss around the managers who boss around the peasants. Rich habos are willing to pay thousands of coins in order to become high ranking officials so they can tell the peasants what to do. Power sells and the agencies know this. And side note, notice how there are two sets of uniforms in this agency. One looks decent and the other looks like a school PE kit. This is because Habo's premium membership, Habo Club, is needed to wear certain items of clothing. Clothing that doesn't make you look like a complete hobo. Habo doesn't just allow classism within its users, it promotes it. Gambling used to be legal in Habo. Casinos were a commonplace feature of the game. Pre-2014, the Habo economy flourished. Rare items were being traded at high prices, which were used to decorate lavish casinos. Then the Danish Ministry of Taxation caught on and told Habo to stop letting miners spend real-life money on coins to gamble them away. Because child gambling is illegal. This prompted Habo to not only ban gambling, but shut down Habo's largest casinos and banned their owners. This single event has been attributed to Habo's decline. The gambling ban led to the crashing of the stock market. Values of rare items plummeted as they turned out to be pretty much useless for anything other than decorating casinos, and this hit Habo hard. Revenues from coin sales dropped and Habo ended up having to lay off their staff, leading to anarchy. But with the sacking of moderators, the underground casinos rose. People began to gamble the same way they did back in 2014. But with the gambling ban, Habo instituted certain restrictions. You could no longer place more than three dice in a room. So people came up with ingenious solutions to overcome this ban. In the past, people played blackjack and poker with a set of five dice, but it's possible to adapt the game so it only requires three. Furthermore, you could set it so that the room only has three dice, and that the dealers of the casino would simply share the dice around. Another solution people came up with was wired. Wired furniture was the redstone of Habo. Wired took an input, and if certain conditions were met, gave an output. This allowed players to program things in their room and make impressive things such as automatic games. People used wired to make random number generators which acted as dice. These pseudo dice allowed casino owners to circumvent the dice ban. However, the issue with wired is that only the owner of the room and those with special permissions granted by the owner could view its contents. It is possible to rig anything that involves wired. There have been countless stories of opportunistic casino owners rigging their pseudo dice in their favour. Habbo's casino ban inadvertently led to the explosion of con games and scams. Casinos are still by far the most profitable venture of Habbo Hotel, but not necessarily the way you think it is. Sometimes the admins of Habbo log in. In the absence of moderators, casinos operate in broad daylight, but periodically casinos have been shut down by these admins and got their owners banned, so owning a casino is still a risky venture for that few dare risk. Casino owners would sell dealer memberships at a high price, usually for hundreds of coins if not thousands. Usually owners would sell multiple tiers of memberships, with the dice sharing membership usually incurring a premium fee since in-game dice can't be rigged. Casino owners could sell hundreds of these memberships, and it isn't unusual to hear them earn tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of coins by selling them. That's equivalent to tens of thousands of US dollars. The risks outweigh the benefits. With no real moderation and a currency backed with real life money, it is easy to see how Habo turned into a virtual experiment of unregulated capitalism. Many players of the game are teenagers and a sizable proportion of players are adolescent children. Most of them don't have a background in economics, yet the conditions of the game led to the emergence of ruthless capitalist practices. In such a harsh environment, some chose to quit. Others decided to make their own communities, a much fairer one than the one Habo offers, but that's a story for another time. <laughs>